uh, do as I say and not as I do. Uh, mainly because I want them to poop and get as much uh, kind of crap out of their system uh, as possible. Hey everyone, welcome back to Luke Scoldies. Uh, so in this video, I'm going to address a problem that I found in Viola uh, on my main tank. So if you remember in my last video, uh, Viola's dissection, uh, unfortunately she passed and I did I end up looking at her inside, looking at her gills, putting a couple pieces underneath the microscope, and I found parasites in her gills. Uh, what I believe to be gill flukes. They're very common uh, in goldfish and one of the common treatments for gill flukes is praziquantel. Uh, however, I've ran my fish in my outdoor system through that multiple times pretty recently and the fact that there were still some, uh, some gill flukes on her means that they're maybe somewhat prazi resistant and the, or the praziquantel is not working very well. So I'm going to try a new treatment called flubendazole. I've done a little bit of research on it. I've heard of people having pretty good success with it. So I'm going to try flubendazole on my goldfish out there and show you guys how I do it, what my dosage is, um, and basically tell you the results in the end. Maybe I'll do the results in a different video, but I'm going to show you how I'm starting it now uh, in this video. Okay, so the flubendazole that I'm going to be using for this uh, procedure, I thought I heard one of my fish flop around behind me, uh, is Absolute Wormer uh, by Cloverleaf. And this stuff, I can link it down in the description below. Um, this stuff is marketed to basically be effective towards different kinds of parasites like, like uh, ankle worms and flukes and fish lice. Uh, but it's also found that it actually does work against protozoa. So this could actually be a really effective treatment for, uh, for quarantining a fish. So it get, gets rid of parasites and gets rid of protozoa, which are the main two things you want to address when you, when you quarantine a fish. Um, and this could also be a good, you know, first response if you're having problems in your tank. This doesn't have to, it can just be put in the water column and can kind of help clear everything. Um, now, the thing that's a little confusing is this is a 5% powder. The stuff that comes in here, it's a 5% powder of flubendazole. And online, what I've found from a majority of sources is they say for, um, for a 5% powder, you want to use about one gram per 20 gallons. That's what I found from a majority of places online. Um, however, on this thing, it says you want to use one gram per 100 gallons for 5% powder. Uh, so I was a little conflicted. I was thinking, okay, like this thing is saying to use five times less dosage, but then basically every single place online I've found uh, has reported people using five times that dosage, about one, one gram of 5% for 20 gallons, and I also found some places uh, showing even a lot higher than that, uh, even four times higher than that, saying that you wanna use basically uh, one gram of this stuff for every five gallons. So I found a lot of random dosages online. This one seemed a lot lower to me, um, so I'm actually deciding to go with some of the things I found online for the 5% dosage, um, just because I don't know why this is recommending such a low dosage, and I want this to be an effective treatment and I found so many sources corroborating that saying it's okay uh, to basically use one gram of 5% per, per 20 gallons. So that's what I'm going to do uh, for this, for, for this uh, treatment. Um, but again, though, do your own research. This is just me showing what I'm doing, and eventually I'll show the results. Uh, there's risk associated with everything, but from what I've found, the risk of overdosing this is really not that much. Uh, however, again, if you copy my exact thing and all your fish die, that's not on, that's on you, okay? Do your own research, take your own risks. I'm taking my own risks, I'm just showing them. Okay, so I know my scale looks pretty dirty. Uh, I've used it to weigh out other medications and other stuff. Um, but basically, I'm gonna be doing this for my outdoor stock tank system. And I have three tanks in this system, but I have all the fish in one of the tanks. Um, and that one tank they're all in is around 130 gallons. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make sure the water level's a little bit reduced. And then I'm actually gonna isolate that one tank and have the water, um, and have the water be in that one tank alone while I'm doing this treatment. So I'm gonna I'm gonna put the pump to the other tanks and basically leave that tank by itself. So I don't have to use as much medication to treat the entire thing, um, but instead just treat the tank that the goldfish are in. Um, there is some degree of risk in doing this because there could be some flukes in other parts of the tank. Um, but again, that's a risk I'm gonna take. A majority of these flukes and stuff live on the fish. And it's actually very rare that you would find yourself getting rid of 100% of all the flukes. So what I'm going to do is I have this other bag. And i got to get 6 grams, basically, because uh, if I'm doing around 120 gallons, i got to get 6 grams worth. Alrighty, that's already 
You know what? I'll leave it like that because I'll, I'll leave it at I'll leave it at it's a 130 gallon tank, so I'll leave it like that. It's kind of hard to see. It's not focusing right now. But that's 6.7 grams. Now, yeah, it's a 500 gallon system, but I'm gonna isolate that one tank where all the fish are in. It's about 130 gallons, and I'm only gonna dose this to that tank alone. And for a little over six grams, uh, that is what it comes out to. Now, keep in mind, if you guys do this, you definitely want to be wearing gloves. You definitely uh, want to be careful not to expose yourself to any kind of fish medication. I know I'm doing that right now just because I don't care. But uh, do as I say, not as I do. Uh, some of this stuff, like, I don't, I don't even know if this, is, if this is safe to handle. Maybe I should research that. But I don't really take care of myself sometimes. But you guys should definitely make sure to wear gloves and stuff anytime you handle any fish medication. Okay guys, so this is my outdoor system. Uh, excuse all the background noise you might hear. So basically right now, all the fish are in there, but then water pumps to here, then it goes down to here, then goes back to there. I think I'm gonna take that pump, put it over here, and just circulate the water through this thing. And then for around 24 to 48 hours while this thing takes off, uh, you know, does its course and, and medicates the fish, I'm just going to have these bubblers in there. I have, uh, I have sponge filters, and I'm only going to feed them maybe just uh, green peas, like no, no, uh, no protein, because um, I don't want them to produce a lot of waste. Uh, and green peas, they don't have much protein in them, so they won't produce that much ammonia. Uh, but I'm going to take that pump right there, and I'm going to put it over here, and temporarily just have it cycle this thing by itself, and not include that water in the cycle, and we'll have that be its own thing. And then we'll have this medication in there. Hopefully, get any possible gill flukes out of them. Okay, so as you can see, I removed the pump from there. And I ended up putting it right here. So now that bottom tank is uh, pushing fluid up into this top tank. And we're still getting a cycle between these two tanks of water flowing. And I just wanted that because I didn't want stagnant water in these tanks. While I was having this tank be isolated from the system, as you can see, I, I turned those up too. Uh, and uh, having the water volume in that tank stay in that tank, uh, just because if, if, the, if the water got stagnant, it gets nasty. You want it to be flowing. Um, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this uh, flubenazole powder right here, dissolve it in a bucket with some tank water, and then we're gonna slowly pour it around there. Um, and then we're gonna basically check on them, make sure they're not looking too stressed. And then we're gonna do a water change on that tank around like 70% probably uh, within 24 to 48 hours. Uh, and then after that, we'll hook the system back up. We'll probably do this treatment again in five to seven days. So let's get some tank water. Now we got the flubendazole. And keep in mind, this is around 6.7 grams. And that's 130 gallons of water volume. So again, roughly about a gram of 5%, uh, a gram of 5% powder per 20 gallons. It's about what we're doing. Um, but again... Based on sources I've read, it's even okay to overdose that. Some people, some people recommend even dosing that up to four times as much. Uh, so, you know, there's all kinds of dosages out there. I didn't want to do that because that just seems so extreme. I'm already doing five times more than what my package says. Um, so I already thought this is kind of pushing it to the edge. But the fact that there were multiple sources out there that also said that you could do four times that... Um, at least made it made me feel a little more comfortable in giving him this high of a dosage. So you want to mix that up. Okay, now we got the flubendazole. We just want to pour it around random parts of the tank. I don't want to pour it where there's a lot of fish. The fish like to crowd around me. You can see the cloudiness. That's the cloudiness right there. So I'm pouring it over here. You just don't want like a big cloud of it, I guess, to get to get uh, swallowed up by a fish. It's not too, not too good to have them have a super high concentration right there. But the water in here is very highly circulated. And then maybe get a little more water in here. So basically, we got the flubendazole in this tank right here. Um, this does not affect the nitrogen cycle or anything. Uh, we're going to come back in around, let's say, 36 hours, and we're going to do a full water change on this tank. Then we're going to hook the pump back onto here and have it going again. And probably within six days, we'll do another one of those. And that should be good. Maybe we'll do a third one, but I think within six days we'll do, we'll do one more. 
All right, guys, little update here. Uh, so it's, like, it's actually a big update. So, you know, I'm running the goldfish through, through flubendazole right now. Uh, I've actually decided that while I have them in this bath, while I'm running them through this antiparasitic treatment, I'm also going to run them through some levomisol and also some praziquantel as preventative uh, or parasitic treatments. Because uh, I've honestly had suspicions that there's been more parasites in there. And honestly, the more ways you can attack a parasite, the better. Uh, a lot of times, they'll be resistant to a specific medication. Uh, they were, I believe, somewhat resistant to praziquantel alone. But I have heard when you combine certain antiparasitic medications, they can be a little bit more effective. Uh, specifically, uh, I have heard about basically levomisole. It, it paralyzes the parasites and actually uh, allows them to come out of the fish. They, they do come out of the fish. Uh, however, it doesn't kill them. And I've heard that praziquantel, though it kills the parasites, sometimes it can be somewhat hard for the fish to absorb fully. Uh, I've actually read some uh, things written by some veterinarians, and they actually recommend feeding praziquantel. Uh, but then again, like there are issues with getting enough medicated feed to each fish to make sure they all get it. Uh, but if you get the parasites out of the fish and you praziquantel them out and kill them in the in the in the water, uh, that can be another way of killing them. Uh, and also. Levomisol is actually kind of an immuno uh, stimulant for fish. The mechanism, mechanisms behind that are not that well known. Uh, but basically I decided I have all the fish in this tank. Let's try to clear any and all potential parasites all at the same time. So I'm doing the fubendazole, I'm doing the levomisol, and I'm also doing the praziquantel powder all at once. Um, and basically the dosage for this, I already said, uh, I'm doing one gram per 20 gallons. The dosage for this is basically it's it's one gram per hundred gallons but honestly you could even up that a little more I've seen some sites say much much higher uh, you could probably do two grams per hundred gallons it'd be just fine the risk for ov overdosing really any of these products is not that much um, but there's no point in wasting medication but you can go a little overboard just to be a, a, a little safe and then for Prezi Pro I dose it as it says on the bottle uh, 20 gallons per teaspoon or 60 gallons per tablespoon so I did all these uh, in 36 hours, I'm going to do like a 90% water change in there, refill it with water, and then connect it back to the full system. And then again, seven, probably six or seven days later, I'm going to do all three again and hopefully just completely clear them of any and all parasites because I have had some suspicions of, uh, of parasites in there for kind of a while because I've noticed, you know, I've been getting some sick fish here and there. Uh, and I, I've been thinking maybe something's wrong with this and maybe I'm getting some parasites that I just I don't know about. So I'm attacking on all angles, trying to get as many possible parasites out as I can. And I'll let you guys know how this goes. So as I said before, I'm going to be feeding them green peas uh, during this during this little treatment process, uh, mainly because I want them to poop and get as much uh, you know, crap out of their system uh, as possible. Uh, green peas are almost like, like a laxative for, for fish. Uh, when you feed it to them, it really just helps them poop and get everything out of their intestinal tract. Um, and I'm, I, I have a bunch of antiparasitic medications in the water. I really want them to clear their system and get their system active. Uh, so they can, uh, so basically they can hopefully flush out any potential worms they have in their system and get those killed while they're doing this, while they have all these antiparasitic medications in the water. Though they do absorb some of these through the skin, uh, it can be beneficial just to, just to help them poop, just to get any, any stuff out of there and, you know, uh, you know, flush out any remaining parasites. Anytime you have something in your goldfish's gut, whether that be gas, whether that be internal parasites potentially, uh, or just be, you know, an internal infection, uh, it can be good to, just to feed uh, deshelled peas because this can help push all that out of there. Uh, it's also a great thing to feed when your goldfish are potentially, you know, having buoyancy problems and gas issues because this, this just helps them poop all that gas and stuff out. Um, but yeah, basically I don't, I don't have the, the, the showing of the second treatment on this video cause it's basically pretty much the same as this first one. Uh, but if you want to do this, you would again, six days after you, uh, six days after you change the water. So you do, you dose all the medications, you feed your peas 36 hours later, you change out all that water. And then probably six days after that, uh, you do the, the whole, the whole thing again. And if you wanted to, you could do it a third time after that, but generally for, for parasites, Treating two times is about is about all you need to you know kill all the parasites at once and then again kill out any parasites that came out of emerging emerging eggs. But to be extra safe and get a little higher margin of safety, uh, you could do it could do it a third time. Some people even do it maybe even more like a fourth time. Um, but that's what I'm doing. And generally with these parasitic treatments, you're you're not 
curing 100% of the parasites, but what you're trying to do is you're trying to eliminate like 90, 95% of them, get the population of those parasites really, really down uh, to the point where it's not affecting the goldfish that much. Um, but generally, something I've realized is that kind of goldfish always kind of come with some parasites here and there. Some of them are not that harmful, some of them are. Uh, but it, it really comes down to making sure your goldfish are healthy and making sure you can keep down the populations of these parasites uh, to the point where your goldfish can still thrive. Um, but also, like, you have, to, you have to realize that it's, it's, sometimes it's impossible to fully get rid of some of these bugs that, that just naturally come with goldfish. But uh, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. This is what I'm doing to kind of help treat a potential parasite problem that I, that I think I might have with my fish. Um, again, the risks associated with everything I'm doing here, make sure to do your own research. Uh, but this is what I'm doing right here. I'm just, just as another source to help you guys out. Uh, but thank you. See you guys next time.